How can Dobby ever repay you? Never try to save my life again. When I got the part, I had no idea that Dobby elicited a sort of degree of loyalty from fans that I'm, I'm now very aware of. Stupid elf! Dobby is a free elf, and Dobby has come to save Harry Potter and his friends! When I read the book, Dobby dying was the most heartbreaking part. I don't know if that's the Hermione in me <laughs> uh, coming out, but it really, really got to me, and I just feel like he's real. <laughs> I obviously need a cue to say Harry Potter, the first Harry Potter. It's quite unusual and a measure of how much attention to detail there is in the film that I get taken to wherever they're shooting the Dobby scenes and I'm made to feel that I own and possess the character in a way that a voiceover artist doesn't always feel. Somebody help me! Such a beautiful place to be with friends. <laughs> when I did it the first time, which is in the second film, it was very much me in a sound studio working with the film that had already been shot and offering up very casual suggestions on how he might move. <gasps> Whereas this time, my job is to suggest the movement much more as well as speak. Bobby is happy. <laughs> then I nuzzle in, that's when I go into Daniel. Diane, my collaborator, who is closer to the size of Dobby, so she then gives a scale to, to what I've suggested and proposed. Dobby, no! And then the special effects people have such a massive impact on the character that I never really take full credit for the character, since a large part of its character comes from its movement, which I can only suggest and they can realise. Okay, we'll, we'll fix you. Come on now, have something. Dobby's death scene in the film was one of those rare days when everything just goes right in terms of what you want for the scene. Like it was a grey, wet, horrible day and perfect for the scene. We had the weather forecast and knew that it was getting cloudier so we held off filming today's scene as long as we could because we felt it was quite desolate and overcast and a little bit bleak which we felt was the appropriate mood for the death of Dobby. Dobby is happy to be with his friend. Harry Potter. As an actor, you, you're just grateful for it because it just happens. And the whole emotion of the scene, of the fact that we were soaked to our skin and shivering and everything just made it a, a day when it was, it was right to film that scene. I want to bury him. Properly. Without magic. Harry wants to invest as much love in Dobby's burial as Dobby showed him throughout his life. And there was something really moving about seeing these three go through this ritual, this timeless ritual of burying somebody. It was almost like they were going through this rites of passage when they had to, with their hands, pull away the, the sand and the dirt and the earth to make this space for this little creature. Dobby's just, he's an innocent. And I think for Harry to actually bury him shows what a great deal Dobby must have meant to Harry. But also I think he probably regards himself as sort of the closest thing to family that Dobby has. Was I surprised when he died at the end? Well, uh, uh, yes, because you're never prepared for a character to suddenly disappear from a book. But that's uh, true friendship, you know. So in that sense it isn't surprising because Dobby represents that goodness isn't dependent on the size of the character. You know, it's the ultimate sacrifice.